glory be to God. If there was one prayer request I had all through this time and in this season, is that the Lord will allow us to gather on this Sunday, the Pentecost Sunday. And I'm so grateful to a prayer answering God. Um, if you are well aware, we were going to gather anyway. We were, we were ready. We were trying to get a park. We are trying to get somewhere until the president uh, gave the word that churches can gather. And I'm so grateful to everybody, the media, the head of departments. I'm grateful especially to Pastor Peter, who's been working relentlessly uh, behind the scenes. All the king's men, the way they metamorphose into whatever we needed is just been amazing. May the Lord God Almighty bless you beyond your imagination in the name of Jesus. It's a brand new day, and I'm just so excited. Hallelujah. My message this morning, I titled it, Where is the Fire? Where is the Fire? Uh, Professor Owolabi, one of my sons in the church, he gave me a book. Um, I can't even remember the title now. Probably what happened to the fire or something. But... The book has just it, it's, it's changed my perspective about church and everything else. And especially in the time of this and where we're coming from, coming from the sheltering, the shut-in, the lockdown, the quarantine, however you choose to phrase it, you want to ask, where is the fire of the church? We can ask that corporately, but this morning, my greatest prayer is that the Holy Spirit will provoke you See, you answer that question, where is your fire? If you don't have it, if you never had it, no problem. This is the time to cry out to the Lord and say, baptize me with your fire. Because it's the fire that you carry, it's the fire that the church carries that's going to make a world of difference. So ask the Lord this morning specifically and say, Lord, help me answer this question. Then let me, let it be seen on me. In that book that I was reading, John Wesley, people were um, asking him, a journalist asked him and said, how be it that you are ministering in Bellsville and people are repenting in Baltimore? How do you do it? What do you do? He said, I set, I, I want you, I want this to be etched. I want it to be written in your heart. I want you to never forget it. John Wesley answered the journalist and said, I set myself on fire, and they come to see me burn, to see me burn for God. I set myself on fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost. You may be a housewife, you may be a soldier, you may be a doctor, you may be a nurse, you may be, as long as you are a child of God, you must carry a fire that distinguishes you from everybody else. And that's my prayer this morning. That will not just be another Pentecost. It will not just be a gathering. It will not just be a church going. The fire of God will burn in your heart. And burn on you. And reveal you as a child of God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, my heart is overflowing with gratitude and joy at your accepting us this morning in your presence. It's a privilege now to be able to gather. I appreciate your grace. I appreciate what you have done for your church. And I'm so grateful this morning. Lord, take us beyond the building and set us on fire so that our neighbors will see us burn for you. Our co-workers will see us burn for you. Our community, our city, our state, our nation will see us burn for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, again, the Holy Spirit is here with us. Kindle us in the name of Jesus. Set us aflame in the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me to Leviticus chapter 6 verse 13. Glory to God. It says, and after a fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. Can you write this on your sticker, in your notes, in your car, in your mirror, in your bathroom? 
a fire, the fire of God shall always be burning on your altar and it will never go out in the name of Jesus. The greatest place where you can carry the fire of God is in your heart. It's in yourself. You are the altar of God. You are the best altar that the Lord God Almighty can have. Let us be in that place of deep hunger for God. We're going to look in the book of Acts of the Apostles. I'll look briefly in chapter 1 and then I'll move to chapter 2. In chapter 1, verse 15. This was after the Lord God Almighty had ascended exactly 10 days ago. And... Um, they gathered where the Lord said, go and wait for the promise of the Father. They were waiting. In verse 14, the Bible says, they all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. This was very important to note for people who say that a woman shouldn't preach, a woman shouldn't pastor, a woman shouldn't be born. If they were all together, they waited for the promise. The promise came when the promise of the Father came in the body of the Holy Spirit. He didn't discriminate between the gender he poured out himself on everybody for different assignments and in that place verse 15 the bible says that apostle peter stood up in the midst of the disciples altogether the number of names that were said to be about 120 in other words there were 120 gathered in the particular location but there were others around them people were they were drawn to their waiting on the lord they wanted to see what were they doing so there were several people from around and we will soon see from scriptures there and peter the bible says he just stood up in the midst of them explained to them what is happening Look in verse 16 very briefly. Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. I want you to note that this was like a pre um, Pentecost, just if it, probably a few days before, or probably just a day before. But Peter just stood up to address them, to let them know that Judas failed us, but it's not anything to worry about. It was already prophesied. In other words, he cannot help but fulfill his prophecy. So he has done his own. Let's get another person. And they did it uh, in the way that the Bible um, instituted as soon as they were 12 again as soon as there was that unity there was that completion again look in verse 2 we're going to look through for a couple of minutes the bible says when the day of pentecost had fully come so there was a fullness of time and one of the things that we need to pray in our lives is to know our time and know our season uh, the other day, about two weeks ago, I just received a small box in the uh, mail. I opened it. It was a wristwatch. It didn't say where. It didn't say when. Very pretty wristwatch. I was actually going to wear it today, but I forgot. And um, I asked my daughter, could you check my account for me? I don't know how to log in into it. Did any, did, I didn't buy anything. That's why I was checking. And I don't want it to be that I'll start receiving strange gifts every time and money will be going out of my account, you know. And uh, no, she said there was nothing, no order, no strength in everything. We can tell which one is bill and everything. I said, I don't understand, but I have a brand new watch. And I just kept it and smiled. I'm like, it must be my time. It must be harvest time. But God always indicates at every particular time, your change of God, your change of season. One of the prayers is that, Lord, let me be sensitive to my timing in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says that the day of Pentecost has fully come. When it has fully come, the power of God came. The Holy Spirit came according to the promise. When your time has come, nothing can stop you. When your time is full, when the Lord God Almighty has determined that this is your time, this is your season, absolutely nothing can stop your progress. Absolutely nothing can stop your breakthrough. There is no power, there is no sorcery, there is no witchcraft, there is no warlord. There's absolutely, let all the arsenals of earth come together. It cannot stop what God has agreed to 
and settled that your time has fully come. So it was the full time of the Holy Spirit, just like today is a fullness of time. And the thing that God has for you, it will spill into your life. It will spill over to you in the name of Jesus. Today is actually historic, is actually a fullness of time, prophetically, and things that have been, even been happening in our society. You know, the Pentecost, the, on that original day, it happened right after the Shavuot feast where they were celebrating when Moses received the Torah from the Lord. How be it that the Lord God Almighty orchestrated it, that the fullness of time will also fall on the day that the fullness of the word was received by man. It was not a coincidence. So the Lord will align your time and your season and the Lord will grace you to move you till your fullness of time. And when that fullness of time comes... There's nothing that can stop you in the mighty name of Jesus. And another thing I want you to note here, when the, Holy, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit fully came, he never left. The next time the Holy Spirit will leave this earth, he's going to live with us. So if he fully came and he never left, it means that his fullness is still here. So when you are ready, when it's your time, when you get the revelation, when you have the understanding, you dive in and be full. And today is such a day. Verse 2, it says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3, there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. I had preached on that verse 3 before, the flame with your name on it. In other words, when the fullness of the Lord God Almighty came, he didn't discriminate, he didn't distinguish, he didn't say, oh, you are a boy, oh, you are a man, oh, you are single, you are widowed, you are not married. The Lord God Almighty fully poured himself upon every vessel that was available. But here is something I noted in this passage as I was restudying it. In verse 2, the Bible says that the sound came. There must always be a sound that precedes the fire. A sound always comes from heaven before the fire comes. Now it is to who is listening, to the ones who are awaiting, to the ones who are longing, thirsting, crying out and say, Lord, baptize me with your fire. Lord, baptize me with your Holy Ghost. Lord, baptize me. Distinguish me. Lord, don't let me live this life and be ordinary. Add yourself to me, to my natural, and not become supernatural. The Lord God Almighty, before he sends that fire, a sound comes. And we have to listen to that sound. Because as soon as that sound resounds from the spirit of the almighty God, the fire will fall. Amen. Now something calls for that sound. Something provokes that sound. Is your thirst? Is your hunger? Is your being set apart? Is your being sanctified? Is your being consecrated? Is your hunger? Is your thirst? Is you wanting God that causes that sound to reciprocate to your hunger? You hear that sound and the fire will fall. We need the fire in this generation. We don't need a better preacher. We don't need a better church. We don't need a greater uh, um, gathering. We don't need all of the things that we have called church. And the fire was not there. So we had a clay, we had a form, but there was no fire. We had a clay, we had a form, there was no breath of God to bring that sound from heaven. But I am in the generation and I am in the group of the remnants. I will hear the sound of God and it will produce the global fire of revival in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A prophecy is rising up in my spirit. You see, the devil has a way of going first before the Lord. In what is happening right now in Minnesota, they're burning, they're looting, they're taking an advantage of a satanic plan. 
to cause even more pandemonium. Now people don't care about COVID-19. Everybody is out on the street. They don't care if they die. But that is a satanic fire. It's not the fire of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit was telling me that being that the devil is an imitator, that fire is a strange fire. That fire is an illegal fire. But you set your heart and you set my word upon Minnesota and watch the fire of my revival burn over that city. I will replace the strength fire in the mighty name of Jesus. I will make the nation, the city of, 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 of uh, Minneapolis, I will make it the north gate into America and I will pour out my fire. I will pour out my fire. I will pour out my fire. The strength fire is not the last fire you will see. My fire is coming. So, the people who are intercessors will begin to cry out unto the Lord and say, Lord, here is Minnesota, here is Minneapolis, here is St. Paul. Lord, where is your fire? The sound will come and the fire will come in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to focus on you a little bit more today. I want you to listen for that sound. It would not be a sound everybody will hear. It's your sound Responding to your hunger, responding to your thirst, responding to you calling for God. Because our God will come and he will not be silent. He's still the God of Elijah. He's the God yesterday, today and forever. He's still the Lord, our God, a consuming fire. The cry of the church at this time should be, Lord, consume me. Until I'm no more. Consume me. Until carnality of, uh, uh, of man is not found in me. Let me walk with you until I'm no more. Because the generation coming will ask us, where is the fire? Where is the fire that you got when you were saved? There's, you, you can't blame anybody anymore. Some of us were ordained by sorcerers. Some of us were ordained, prayed over by witches. Some of us were ordained, sanctioned, mentored by warlords. It's allowed by God because you didn't know better. But there will be a time and a season that your eyes will open. That you will call God. He will not just be the God of my father. He will be Elohe, the Lord God Almighty. Elohika, the Lord my God. When you begin to respond to God and call upon God, he will come. And he will not be silent. That's the place that the shutting has placed us. If you didn't know God for yourself before, you will know how to call God for yourself by yourself. You will cry for God and ask the Lord, where is that fire? Where is that fire? If the Holy Ghost never really left, why am I lukewarm? If the Holy Ghost never left, why am I discouraged? Why am I frustrated? Why am I anxious? Why am I stressed? Those two things cannot cohabit. Have you ever tried to put a fly buzzing around your house on the stove with the fire on? What happens? Fire represent, I mean, fly represents the spirit of Beelzebub. It cannot stand fire. When you are on fire, every attribute, everything that the enemy is sending against you to war against you, they will hit the fire. They will be consumed. They will hit the fire. They will be decimated by the power that is in the name of Jesus. We are praying there's no fire. We are singing there's no fire. We are ushering there's no fire. There will come a time when everybody will stand in their individual fire. You don't need an apostle. You don't need a prophet. You don't need a pastor evangelist or a teacher. You don't need anybody with an office. You're just going to be a bro. You're going to be a sis. And you're going to say, hey, I'm seeing that devil upon you. I'm casting it out in the name of Jesus. Guess what? Sometimes you don't need to say a word. The fire you carry is enough to terrify the power of darkness around you. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you are over 10 years old, you can carry the fire of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. You can carry the fire of a prophetic word. Of a 10 year old Samuel. Who gave a word that override the word of the prophets of the land. The national prophets. The assumed prophets. The titled prophets. The prophet of the temple. 
It was the word of a 10-year-old boy that the Lord God Almighty obey. So age is not a barrier. It's about the hunger for the fire. And the Bible says there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them. Take your fire. Somebody else on fire does not diminish yours. That's why there should be no envy, there should be no competition. Some people don't prophesy in church until somebody else prophesies. They don't say nothing. They don't want to do anything until they see somebody else doing what they're called to do, then they want what you have. It's a crazy spirit from the pit of hell. Everybody can have the fire. It sat on them individually. It's not just a corporate thing. Thank God for the ability to have the corporate fire. But you need to carry one because church won't go home with you. In your home, you are the church. In the middle of the night, you are the church. When you have to lay hands on your children or on your spouse, you are the church. So you better carry a fire. You better be distinguished by a fire. You better not be content by a religion. You better not be content by being lukewarm or playing church. All the dreams you've had, they never come to pass. All the prophetic words you've given, you've seen, you've said, it never came to pass. There's no fire. There's no shame in it. Go back to the source of fire. Go back to the Holy Spirit. Fall on your face and say, I'm walking in this gift, but there's no fruit. There's no fruit because there's no fire. And nobody can impart the fire on you. The fire responds to the hunger from the inside of you. This is where I want to leave us this morning. Don't be content with church as usual. Because there was a pre-COVID-19 life. And there's a post-COVID-19 life. Let me quickly show you that in the Bible. I read chapter 15 of Acts chapter 1. Look in verse 12 of Acts chapter 2. When it came, they, they, they had an amazement, just like we've had amazing times. I don't care what kind of a prophet you are. I don't care what kind of a, 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 an apostle you are. It has been a time of awe and wonder. Where you wake up literally every morning. I don't know about you. You may be that super spiritual. But every day now I'm asking the Lord, what are you doing? What do you want to do? What would you want me to do today? What is your expectation? Which is exactly where God needed us to be anyway. But we figured we know how to do it. So there was a Peter. Pre-Pentecost Peter. He stood up in the midst of the disciple. But look at the after Pentecost, Peter, in verse 12, they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others were mocking them, and they're full of wine. Have we not been mocked? Have we not been ridiculed? The church has been, it was rendered non-essential. And even people within the church were mocking the church and say, oh, prophet, what was the year again? What did you, what was your prophecy again? They were mocking the church, but it's very usual to do. But this is how you respond. When you have the fire, you don't regard their mockery. When you have the fire, you have a solution. When you are on fire for God, you come with a solution. See, Peter, in the first instance in verse 15, Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, they said Peter stood up and spoke for the eleven. But hear him in verse 14. The Bible says, but Peter standing up with the eleven. The same thing he did pre, but look at the new Peter. He raised his voice. He raised his voice. Do you know what that meant to me? He raised his voice. His voice had added unto it authority and boldness. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said this um, season, I have demarcated my church between the bold and the coward, between the one with my authority and the ones who fall behind. is a time and a season for demarcation. It was the same Peter. He stood up, but he was a regular guy. But in this place, Peter stood up. He raised his voice because he had a message. He raised his voice. He must be heard. It was not in the volume of the voice, but in the quality and the content and the power and the fire of what he had to say. And he preached the longest 
message ever. When I've ever studied on Pentecost, when I get to that part, I just quickly hurry it. I know that scripture is uh, verse, uh, Psalm 16, and I'll chuckle in my mind that man, uh, Peter, that was a, a boring service, but because power was there, fire was there, it made all the difference. So I was getting ready to do the same thing this year, and the Lord spoke to me and said, I actually want you to analyze the sermon of Peter. I'm like, which someone? Did he preach somewhere else? Like in 1 Peter 2, 2 Peter 2? No. He was this same one. And I was forced to go back there and do a line by line looking at it. And I was amazed. He raised his voice with confidence because power had come. It makes a timid person, an ordinarily timid person, it makes you bold. It gives you authority. You have to have the fire. In your prayer, in your closet, you have to, there is no way the devil will look, answer you. If you're going there and you're like, please leave me alone, it's not going to happen. The devil knows you don't know who you are. And because it knows you don't know who you are, it will attempt to cheat you. But even just with one look, the back off, with authority, with fire and with power, you will hear the shout outside of the one who was just knocked out. You will hear birds dying. You will wake up and see dead birds on your deck. Because the sword came by your word. The fire came at your word and slaughtered them. He's still the same God. He's a consuming fire. Ask the Lord for your own fire. This is Peter. He began to preach. Men of Judea, you who dwell in Jerusalem... These are not drunk, he explained it, and then he spoke the word of prophet Joel upon them. But look in verse 22, which is what the Lord God Almighty emphasized to me. There was something I want to bring out to you. When you walk out of this church today, a boldness is coming upon you. An authority is going to be in you, but until you release it, you won't know. The Holy Spirit showed me how when Peter spoke with that boldness, he owned the moment. You need to own your day. You need to own your morning. You need to command your morning. You need to own your time. You need to own your season. The enemy may be doing all manners of craziness he wants to do. You raise up your voice above the pandemonium and tell exactly that day. Draw it how you want it to be. You need to own your time, own your life, own your season, own your moment. That was what Peter did. When he stood up, did he ever record it in your Bible that anybody said, Oh, Peter, who, 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 who anointed you? Did Jesus say you should speak? No, no, no. No. He owned the moment. Own your life. Own your moment. Own your season. Own your marriage. Own your business. Own your home. Do you know some people just, pandemonium, pandemic was going on. People were doing stuff. Some of my children, they bought a home. It was not a quick home that you just put together and they they say, come and dedicate the house. And two of us are colliding on the steps. I can go on one step, they can go on. That was how massive the house was. I was excited. I'm like, what? What appointment? I'm coming. I need to know what pushed you. To know that you can buy a house. You are not afraid. Oh, Jesus is coming. Should I buy a house? Let's withdraw our money and go and hide it in the bush. Oh my God. It's the end of the world. No, they bought a mansion. Benjamin Matthews had the audacity to propose to his bride. I cannot share their testimonies. It's like they're like, okay, pandemonium, you're over there, but we're over here in Christ. And we are doing everything that we were supposed to do and we don't pay you no mind. Bold people. I met them. I saw people praying now that I'm like, do you mind praying for me? Put me on your prayer list. Our church members. That's what you're supposed to come out. 
owning the moment. That, okay, I didn't see this coming. I wasn't prepared for it. But there is a God who knows yesterday, today, and forever. He owns yesterday, today, and forever. I'm in him. I will own my moment. Don't let any society, any media, any lie dictate to you what your day and your season should be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I've never seen a season like we just came out of. It was in 90 days where the Lord God Almighty decided to make a mockery of something very serious. It was very serious. People were dying, but he will not come near your dwelling. We're sorry for the people who die, but people die of other things anyway. Cancer is killing more. Abortion has killed a million already in the first three months of the year. Look at the young, beautiful, strong man that was just choked to death. For nine minutes. It wasn't COVID. There is a life that will still happen. So you need to get out of the mentality because the Lord God Almighty has shut down that season. Don't stay in your last season. In the name of Jesus. You may wear your mask, but it's not muffling you. You may cover whatever they need you to cover, sanitize everything they need you to sanitize, but know that God is still God in this season, and more so for the people who are looking straight up to him. I was sitting in my house preaching in California, preaching in Qatar. Pre I'm like, what the heck is happening? There was a week I was preaching Monday, Tuesday, Ask Our Media. And I'm thinking, Jesus, this is supposed to be a lazy time for everybody. No, they're like, we know you are not traveling. Do you mind? I'm like, uh, what am I going to say? I'm busy. I said, how can God make you busy in a sheltered place? And there was one. Let me leave it so that I can keep to time. Peter stood here with his boldness and authority boldness and authority that's what you need to work out that's one thing i'm sure god poured out today on this pentecost one thing he's kindling on the inside of you a season where god is introducing you to the giants on the inside of you is there any reason why you ladies are standing sit down please i can understand the military you even see our Soldier is well rested and leg covered. Please sit down. Ah, please. Jesus. If they came in late, you can still put the stuff to their head and show them, but please be extremely comfortable. Peter had that boldness, and God wants to give it to you. Because in this new age, we need it. In this new season, we need it. It's a new era. It will never, ever, ever, ever be like it was. It's going to be better. Amen. If you are worried, oh, how is my life ever going to go back to we want to know? It can never. But it can be better. And it's actually that better that I'm looking for. It is actually that better I'm ushering you into. Because a demarcation has already happened after these 90 days. A difference, the line has already been drawn. Find yourself on the Lord's side in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He began to preach. Hear his message in verse 22. Hear his message. This is the key of his message. He said, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. That's the message. Jesus of Nazareth. A man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourself known. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. You have taken by lawless hands, crucified him, put him to death. God raised him, having loosed the pain of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. And he said, of that all that you did to him, he was already foretold. What am I bringing out of that? The message of Pentecost is nothing else but Jesus. If you are ushering, you usher like Jesus. If you're media, if you're teaching children, everything you need to communicate is all about Jesus. Nothing else. No church. No denomination, 
Not affiliations. No. Whatever we have all been privileged, called by God to do, let it reflect Jesus. Let it express Jesus. The Holy Spirit said, I told you to go back to that message because that is what I want. It's not that the revival. If I want to save the world in an hour, I can do it as God. I need each individual to return to me and have on their lips nothing else but Jesus. Have in their heart nothing else but Jesus. Jesus, that's the key of the message. So where is the fire? If it was fully poured out and it never left, the fire is still here. And we don't have it because we don't ask for it. We don't ask for it because we don't know that we need it. But this is the only thing that distinguishes us from the world. If you look at me, we look like the world. I'm made up, I have red lips. Everything else that would have made the religious people have a heart attack. That why are you, and why is your hair short? Why is it not covered? Where's your heart? Where's your muffler? Where's your basket? Where's everything that we need to cover you up? Everything else they care about but Jesus. So I can come in wrapped as a mummy, it will be okay. And fulfill religion, no fire. You don't need to beg people to come to church if there's fire. You don't need to beg them to give their lives to God. John Wesley is preaching here. They're giving their lives to not a screen, to not a message in Baltimore. They don't know why they're crying 100 miles away. Because of the fire. And this is not what anybody can give you. It's your hunger that will produce the fire. And I made up my mind. That Lord, your fire is here. I've got to carry it. I will be your glory carrier. Not just by name, but by fruit. So where is the fire? Where is your fire? Jeremiah said, the fire of the Lord is shut up in my bones. Even when I want to be justifiably depressed, I can't be. The fire won't let me. The fire won't let me go back. The fire won't let me go back to my vomit. The fire won't let me be acceptable in the place where the Lord delivered me from. The fire separates. Where is the fire? Number one, I made up my mind. I don't ever want to settle for any kind of life without the Holy Spirit. I don't want him dormant in me. I don't want him stagnated. I don't want him muffled. I don't want him stifled in me. I want the fire to be expressed through the Holy Spirit of the living God. The third person of the Trinity that I carry. I don't ever want to settle for any kind of life. If you listen to a message, it's not what you are expecting. Preach your own. You have the Bible, you have the fire. Preach yourself and knock your own self out. You don't have to, there's no, I can't attend a boring service. Once you say open your Bible to anything here, it's a fire to me. Because the Bible assures me in Psalm 104 verse 4. It says the minister, his servants are like a flame of fire. The servants of the Lord are like a flame of fire. The Lord expects us to be a flame of fire. So if I'm asking you really where is your fire, I can't see. And you can ask me where is your fire because you can't see it, but I can get it. It's not a condemnation. It's not the end of the world. Even to be a mother, even to be a wife, to be a husband, to be a, an entrepreneur, I need fire. They don't understand it, but they say something like this, that when you spoke, you had a presence. I said, that presence is fire. Why didn't the other person have the presence? We're all human beings, the same thing. Female, female, we carry the same things on our chest behind us. We look exactly the same. But the fire would distinguish you. The fire of God would distinguish you. I made up my mind. I will not settle for any kind of life without the Holy Spirit. Number two. There is the season that we're moving in from today. The rise of Obadiahs. These are prophets with no name. These are prophets that have been hidden. In this past week, I was joining one of my new ladies, lady friends. She's a co-laborer in the ministry. I just um, 
get uh, into her ministry. She has a midday manna every 12.30. Last week, on Monday, I think maybe she preached, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the men that preached were under 30. And they were on pure raging fire. Like, I went there just to say, okay, if she asked me, did you see the meeting? I said, I, I wanted to say yes. So I will be doing other things and be listening. After five minutes, I shot the other thing. I said, oh, I got to listen. Then the first boy, I heard him say, the woman had been in ministry more than the years he has been alive. 30, 30, 30. Under, not, they were not quite 30 years old. So age is not a barrier. There will be an emergency, emergence of Obadiah's hidden prophets that the Lord has been pouring himself all out into. One day you just see them explode. And it could be you a housewife. It could be you a young child. I use them as an example to say that your youth is not a barrier. This is not when you waste your youth. There are more brilliant people than you are. There are better, stronger people who are in the courts that have a better advantage than you. So you are completely disadvantaged. What will put you back on top, relevant and significant, is the fire you carry. So this is the time that all the youth should be crying out for the Holy Spirit and say, I want to know you. Holy Spirit, I want to know you. I need to know you. I want to know you. Holy Spirit, baptize me with your fire. Set me apart. The youth, the generation, the millennial, they need the fire. They don't need the preaching. They, don't, they need a fire that will take the tattoo off their body while they are worshipping. You came in tattooed, you look and your body is smooth, you will believe Jesus. In church, we need miracles, we need signs. This is not the time you yell at them with no, no, no substance. There is an emergence of Obadiah's, a new platform. You don't have to have a grandfather or somebody who will put you there. God himself is going to create the platform for you because he's poured something in you that the world needs. Number three, we've got to have this cry to have Pentecost at all costs. I was studying and getting ready yesterday and the Holy Spirit roared this out of my spirit. Pentecost at all costs. The next point is that I don't want to be an illegal Pentecostal. You know how you're an illegal immigrant because you do not have everything that makes you the citizen of that country? I used to be an illegal alien, but thank God today I'm a citizen of the United States of America. You can be an illegal Pentecostal. Illegal Pentecostal is the one who has a form and shape of God, but there's no power. It makes you instantly illegal within the kingdom of God. Because the Bible says that the culture of the kingdom is joy, power, and of the Holy Ghost. You've got to carry his power. You are singing, power must come out. You've got to meet God before you take people to him. You've got, you, 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 was it Bishop Reynolds who said that you talk to people about the God you yourself haven't talked to? And everybody can tell. That's why they doze off under you. That's why you're trying to tell them something they're trying to fight you. When you have that fire, it puts your voice, not volume. It puts your authority. It puts your boldness above what is trying to overwhelm you. I've got to have Pentecost at all costs. I must have that Pentecostal fire, power at any cost. And it will cost you sleep. It will cost you time. It will cost you your pride. It will cost you laziness. It will cost you procrastination. But all of those things, you actually can do away with them and dive into God. Pentecost at all cost. Number five. You have to know that the Lord God Almighty has set you aside for a time such as this. You must know it. The COVID didn't kill you. Cancer couldn't kill you. Accidents couldn't kill you. Witches couldn't kill you. Sosra. God preserved you for a purpose. And it's for a time such as this. That's what gives you purpose. Oh, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. You are alive. Your being alive is the proof of your purpose. Is the proof of your purpose. 
You may be alive for other people to just shine through. You may be alive and be used by God as a moon. The other lights bounce off you. You are a reflection for them. You stay alive long enough as God has kept you and see why he created you. You have been brought into the kingdom for a time such as this. Number seven. We entered another season of a 90 days change starting from tomorrow. Pentecost finishes today. It finished the, almost the second quarter of the year. We will be in half when June ends. You have to make your time count. And this is the time for change. You cannot be the same. You must refuse to be the same in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number eight. We need the fire again. I cannot emphasize that enough. We need the flames of individual fire again to turn this world upside down. You know when they came out of that room, the Bible called them city troublers. The Bible called them the people who turned the world upside down. What is turned upside down and we are complaining about is what is giving God joy. Where have you turned upside down? Actually... If you see me standing on my two feet, that's because the way I'm supposed to look. But in my life, in the spirit, everything I know how to deal with God have been flipped upside down. Next week, Sunday, I'm going to share it more with you. I want to share something really important with you. If they didn't lock us up between now and back on Sunday, because anything can happen. Before you leave, if nobody was able to reach you, leave your numbers with Pastor Peter so that we can be in touch with you. Somebody can be in touch with you, and we can link you to where you can have um, spiritual growth and nourishing. But if we're back in church, I'm going to share probably one of the most important um, announcements from my ministry with you by the power that is in the name of Jesus to signify this incredible upside down condition that we are all in. Number nine, let there be a personal passionate pursuit of God, the all-consuming fire. Don't pursue religion. Don't pursue man. Leave man alone. Oh, I like what they have. I love the way this person said. Leave them alone. Face your own life. Get your flame. There's no point in you going to carry a fire that was not meant for your head. It will make you bald. It's not just going to happen. Get your own fire. Get the one for you and explode with it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come, let there be a hunger. Let there be a thirst. Let there be a passionate pursuit of God individual pursuit of God. How do you do that? You pray. How do you do that? Seek the Lord. How do you do that? Holy Spirit, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Teach me. You will be amazed. He will teach you what to read. You may not be able yet to hear distinctly from God. You will find yourself doing the things that he wants you to do. Is the Lord leading you. As long as you make him known that you, you, you need him. He will, be, he will be with you. Please give me this um, last scripture. Or second to the last. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy 4. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, not only to me, but all those who loved his appearing. Please give it to me in NIV, uh, this particular scripture, Habakkuk 3.2. Give it to me in NIV, please. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. It says, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Repeat them in our day. This is our prayer. This is our cry. Repeat them in our day. That in my time, make your power known. In your wrath, almighty God, remember mercy. In the name of Jesus. I want to leave you with this prayer point. I want to leave you with this hunger. I want to leave you with this echo from the heart of God. Give me the, leave that scripture on in NIV, please. 
I have heard from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Now, I don't want it to be Acts of the Apostles for me. I want it to be Acts of the Holy Spirit. I have heard of your acts of your Holy Spirit. I stand in awe of all that you can do, all that you have done, all that you will do. Repeat them in our days. The greatest day of the church is not behind her. The greatest day of the church is not even uh, what we've read. The greatest day of the church is about to be epistled by your life, by your testimony. It does not matter your gender, your color, or your age. When you are available, God will pour his grace upon you and the fire will be kindled in you. In our time, Lord, make your power known. In our time, make the acts of the Holy Spirit known. In my time, Lord, make your fire known. In the name of Jesus, let this lukewarm church be set on fire again. Let all these preachers that are rhyming things and copying one another, there's no original message. Lord God Almighty, make your power known in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we rise? The fire is not what you can copy. The fire is not what... There are some people in church, they're fire starters. There are some personalities, they carry so much. When you hang out with them, you catch the fire. They're fire starters. You need to be. You need to seek God. You need to be fuel when somebody else is tired. When somebody else, sometimes they, I don't even know what has come upon me. Everywhere is dark around me. You want to be that person to tell them, I will be your fuel in your fire. I will kindle you back again. I'm not going to throw water on you. I'm not going to look down on you. I'm not going to think, oh, why are you so weak? Or why are you such a, 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 a Lilliputian? No. I'm going to stand with you. I'll pour fuel, the oil of the Holy Ghost into your fire. And you will become a raging inferno again. Iron sharpens iron. We need to be there for one another. This is not the time to play church because the Lord God Almighty is using this season to see who is on the Lord's side. He's using this season to check our hearts, to see what is religion, to see what is dross, to see what is stale, to see what is old, to see the things that we need to let go and be set on fire. This season, nobody can be blamed. No excuses. There's no bad pastor. You haven't seen me in three months. I have not offended you. If I did, it was in your dream and your imagination and God will hold you captive. So if we have done three months of not being able to say, oh, it was what she did, it was what he did. Uh, we better make it is what I did. It's me now. It's me standing in the place of prayer. Lord, it's me needing the fire. It's me, Lord, that wants the change. It's me. It's me now. I've spent that 90 days with me. Psychologists will tell us that if you really want to change a habit, you pick up, you, 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 the old one die in 30 days, you pick up a new one in, in 60 days. But in 90 days, you are completely a transformed, changed person. Please look at your neighbor without being in their face to spit on them and say, are you the same person? Because I haven't seen you in 90 days. You shouldn't be the same person. Tell your neighbor, I need God to set you on fire. As I'm praying that God will set me on fire. Let the revival fire start in my house. Let the fire start with me. Let the fire of God be kindled again. Set me on fire. Ignite me, oh God. Meet me at the altar. The fire of my altar will never go down. It will never be dim. It will never be snuffed out. Lift up your hand and begin to cry out to the Lord. Lord, send us on fire again. Set us on fire again. Do your mighty works in my day. Do your mighty works in our midst. Do your mighty works. Do your mighty acts again. In the name of Jesus. 
Let your fire fall, Lord. 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 Jesus, we need your fire. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence fill this room. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. So come and bow down. One more time, consuming fire. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, your awesome presence. in me that is religion burn off everything in me that is not you burn off everything in you Lord everything in me Holy Spirit burn everything let your fire consume me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet you are the consuming fire consume carnality consume worry consume anything Lord everything that is not you detach me completely dislodge me completely let your fire purify us 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 Lord let your fire purify us let us not owe this next generation. Let us not bankrupt our own destiny for lack of fire. Lord, we have played church enough. Let your consuming fire, let it consume every infirmity, every affliction, every flesh. Let your consuming fire consume us, oh God. Consume us as a church. But Lord, I'm praying for my life. I'm praying for you, God. I'm praying. Let your fire burn in my bones. Let your fire burn, oh Lord God Almighty, in my heart. Let your fire burn again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your fire burn. Let your fire burn. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may please be seated. Heavenly Father, I pray for every man, every woman under the sound of my voice. I pray for everyone watching online, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no distance in the realm of your spirit. Let your fire, oh God, Lord, hit every home right now. Let your fire individually hit every one of us standing here right now, Lord. Let your power, let it hit our destiny. May we never be same again, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. We will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, thank you, precious Holy Spirit. We are sealed with your fire. We carry that flame with our names on it. And Lord God Almighty, this fire is going to become a raging global fire. A raging global inferno in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All our other services for now, Wednesday.